I am so full and I was tearful for most of that talk to be in a room of people who understand what we're trying to do and how important it is and have prepared themselves to do it. What better thing could we have in our lives than that? So thank you to everyone. Thank you, Una, for allowing us to be here. So excited for uh, SOA and all the things. So um, I do want to say that you mentioned earlier that nowhere does everyone have computer science. And I have to say, part of my heart was to make that difference in Chicago, where all students are required to graduate with at least one class. And that means every year, at least 90,000 students do. And that's my heart work. And it was it, it is an amazing difference. But I'm hoping that this effort will allow us to welcome those students in to the industry. Because one of the things that I'm gonna talk about is the difference that it makes in companies to really activate diversity, equity, and inclusion. So the question is, what does it take to move an industry forward? Wow, so that's a really complex question, right? So moving any industry forward is hard. I think moving the tech industry is even harder in practice. First, because change is just hard, especially change that's rooted in human behavior. It's always difficult, right? But we know and we believe, and that's why we're here, that it's not impossible. So at anitab.org, our work is principally about people change. So we support the people who create and work in tech and work to break down the barriers for those who don't yet, but should. There are so many strategies can, that can be effective at making changes at the company level. But since I'm your last barrier between lunch and the bathroom, I'm going to only take time to dig into one today. And that is working towards the ultimate destination of diversity, equity, inclusion that I believe is belonging and removing the barriers to belonging. A report done by McKinsey and Company found that there is a correlation between ethnic and financial performance within companies in the US. We all know this data, right? A Harvard Business Review study assessed the impact of white women, black women, and black men on US GDP since the 1960s, they found that once significant barriers which prevented these groups from entering highly skilled fields such as law, medicine, science, academia, and management were lowered, 25% of US GDP growth could be attributed to these groups just getting access. So now what if we help them belong so first of all, what is belonging? So when workers feel accepted for who they are and appreciated for their unique qualities, they feel that they truly belong at a workplace. A sense of belonging is vital for any workplace. And I believe it is very critical if we're gonna change tech. As belonging is correlated with many positive outcomes such as job satisfaction and work-life balance. We did a recent study and what we found the women technologists had increased feelings of belonging correlated to increased comfort asking for a promotion, increased feelings of being able to be their authentic self, increased professional network, and very importantly, decreased feelings of burnout. I know not, no, one, no one in this room knows about that. So psychological safety comes from belonging. When someone feels valued on their team and can share their ideas, their questions and mistakes without fear of negative consequences, we know that has not been the case in tech, especially for highly minoritized people. Fear in the workplace inhibits learning and cooperation because it diverts mental resources away from the parts of the brain that process memory and information, thus impairing analytic, analytical thinking creativity and problem solving. How can we have tech without that? Now, a tech workforce that can share ideas and make mistakes without fear and is adequately rewarded for its accomplishments is a tech workforce that has the cognitive freedom to take risks. And as all of us know, you can't have innovation 
without risk. The best technical innovations, they started as an idea, as a thought. So a technologist whose brain can think clearly because they belong without the pressures that come from a biased environment or more likely to incubate that thought and birth that idea. Companies have the ability to collect data on so many things. I heard that big box retail knows that you're pregnant before you are, before you do, based upon your purchases. So they have the ability to collect data, both positively and negatively around belonging. It is critical that this data be captured in a way, and we've heard this before, I'm gonna ring all the bells from earlier, that can be disaggregated by segments in their workforce. And then they must act on what that data tells them. It's all about action. Leveraging diversity data will fall short if there's no action, but we're all here to act. And I'm so excited about that. Leveraging diversity data takes a commitment from the top in companies. Management must make it a priority and they must staff it in good economic times and poor economic times. Commitment to measuring outcomes, monitoring progress and continuous improvement can also fight out the backlash of the frozen middle who may be uncomfortable with such changes. I'd talk more about that if I had time. Um, leaders who actively hold all members of their company and organizations accountable to diversity in their culture reap increased retention and the innovation that help, will help to build technology into an industry that better serves the needs of all humanity. That's what it's about for me. So right now we're experiencing this seismic shift. The world is upside down. I don't have to tell you in how many ways. AI and, and all the tech are following very familiar patterns of discrimination and exclusion from the past. Having tech that is inclusive of all of us is not just a nice thing to have, as we all know. It's a matter of equity and justice. If I had to define what I do at my organization, I would say we're about justice. So let us not forget that all the freedoms that we now enjoy started as an idea in someone's head that had the space to incubate it. I am encouraged today to be in the company of all of you on this great day where we start such an amazing journey towards something that we should always have been doing. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your commitment to do the hard thing and let's continue to work hard and make this happen in our lifetimes. Thank you.